my name is Chris Wall at the Wall Network. Today we're going to go over doing an update with the HP Smart Update Manager. As you can see here, I'm walking through an extracted ISO of the Smart Update Manager and launching the executable as an administrator. The first screen you'll be greeted with is kind of a welcome screen. You can pass right on that. And we'll see that it's found the default repository because I'm launching it off of uh, the ISO, or in this case, an extracted ISO. The key point here is to add the targets that you wish to update with Smart Update Manager. Uh, I'm updating a C7000 blade chassis, um, so all I really need to do is point Smart Update Manager to the onboard admin, or OA, give it a password, and it's going to do all the rest for me. So here I've got the credentials put in, and I uh, can click OK. And it's going to create that connection, uh, first create the connection to the OA, and then it's going to do a discovery session. And that's the nice thing with having Smart Update Manager is that really it takes a lot of the, the, the heavy lifting out of it. You know, you may have done blade updates before where you go into the onboard, um, I'm sorry, the ILO of each blade and, and update firmware by you know, loading firmware packages, .bin files to each one. And this really gets rid of all that guesswork. Also, while it's discovering, it's going to grab any ILOs it can find on the on onboard admin. Uh, it's going to grab any virtual connect domains that it finds, and it just really takes a lot of the uh, a lot of the heavy lifting out of the exercise for you. The discovery process can take a while depending on how much gear you have in your uh, blade system. In this particular one, uh, I've got just three blades and a virtual connect manager. So you can see it's found the different IPs of my three blades with their ILOs and the the VC. It's going to go through and start doing discovery of the ILOs. You can see on the type on the right side, it's got an ILO designation for my three blades. And that it needs credentials to get into Virtual Connect uh, since uh, it does not have uh, authority to do so by default. So in this particular case, I'm going to um, uh, edit the target. I actually edited the wrong one there. Uh, so let me click on the VC and edit those credentials. In fact, I'm going to just uncheck all the boxes real quick here just to clean things up. Um, there we go. You see there's a button at the top that says Enter Credentials. You can click that um, and do your credentials that way. Makes it pretty straightforward. Being a lab, everything has the, the same account here, so it makes it kind of easy to remember which one's which. Okay, so Smart Update Manager is going to go ahead and begin creating connection and doing discovery on the VC. As you can see, the onboard admin is done, it's ready to proceed with the update on that, and the blades are starting to finish up as well. And that they're all associated with the onboard admin under that associated targets. Everything is tied into, tied into that onboard admin, which makes things pretty straightforward. Now we'll caution when you're doing an update, make sure that you target the active uh, Virtual Connect Manager. Uh, if you target the, the passive one, you'll get an error. I'm going to show you that later, just what that looks like and how to overcome it. Uh, but it's you know you want to do the the active one. It'll automatically upgrade both sides for you. Same with the onboard admin. This is a uh, a dual configuration. I've got an HA pair of onboard admins. Uh, so it just point you just point to the active one or the the you know the cluster, and it'll do the rest for you. So there we go. Everything is ready to proceed. You want to check the box next to everything that's going to be updated. <coughs> So here we see just kind of a list of what it's going to do, and that's also kind of the order that it's going to do the update. It's going to start with the onboard admin, then move to the VC, and do the ILOs. So I just want to show you, by default, the reboot is off, so it's not going to do any reboots. It's just going to ask you to do it, you know, at your leisure. Uh, let me just actually cancel out of this. Makes things pretty straightforward. You can schedule updates and such, but I'm just going to do an install now. Now what's nice is uh, you'll see Virtual Connect is waiting on the OA, so we're not going to do anything else until the OA is done. Um, so you don't have to you don't have to learn the order of the updates. You don't have to learn any of that stuff. So we'll skip past this because it's going to take a while. I've I've time forward, uh, forwarded time by about 10 minutes or so. It's uh, now completed uh, the OA. It's going to give you a, a check mark, green thumbs up that that it's done, and now it's going to start installing the software on the VC. A note: It did a you know kind of a graceful um, update of the OA. No no actual interruption was was seen, and it's gonna do the same for the VC. You can do this. I've got ESXi servers running all these blades. It's uh, non-invasive. It's not gonna interrupt anything. You can do it. You know during the middle of business. My advice would be don't just because you're inviting 
who knows, but uh, you certainly can. So uh, I typically prefer to do this during a maintenance window, uh, if at all possible. But if you can't, you can't. Uh, so you'll see the estimated time is kind of, you know, is what it is. But uh, the the 15 minute estimate on the OA took actually like 10 or or 8 or something. So that's it. You just kind of let it uh, do the updates. You can scroll through and see how it's doing, and that's it. It'll just go through and say it's all installed. So here we're going to see what I was talking about where it says there's an error. Uh, I've actually rolled the connection over so that the dot seven is the standby. And it lets you know pretty clearly you're, you're on the, the standby uh, module. You need to use the active module. Um, and at this point, I just added the active. It tells you 10.10.9. You know, so I just went and added that as a single target, let it do the discovery. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You know, at least the error is helpful. You know, it's not just saying I got an error. It's telling you specifically what the error was and which Active VC manager, uh, what the IP is of the Active VC manager, which is really nice. So this is a, a great tool. I really like working with it. Uh, so it's going to do the discovery on the active module, and at that point, as soon as it gets done discovering, which should be soon, um, there we go, ready to proceed. What I'm going to do is just kill. The, uh, the old one, so just highlight it, remove target at the bottom, and just get that off of there. There we go, so that's, that's kind of common, and that's how you fix it. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it has been informative. Please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like to see more videos, and also visit my blog at wallnetwork.com. Thank you.